I am here with Olivia Yankovic of ABCI Europe. Thank you so much for joining me in here. So my my pleasure. Question, thank you. So my first question to you is, um, so would you mind telling our audience a bit about yourself and some of the roles and responsibilities you have for ACI Europe? Okay, so uh, I run ACI Europe together with my team. We're based in Brussels. And we're the trade association for the European airports. Uh, we do that on a pan-European basis. We cover 55 countries across the continent. And basically our role is to stand for and defend the collective interest of the airport industry, but also to advance best practices in the management and development of airports. And so, on that note, um, how, what have you been noticing about the recovery patterns for airports and airlines as they come out of COVID-19 and the pandemic? Well, the recovery took quite a while to materialize, yeah. but uh, I think since last year we're definitely into an upward trend. Mm -hmm. uh, we doubled passenger numbers last year compared to 2021, which yeah. is very good. We still have some way to go. Uh, at the moment, we're still about 11% below pre-pandemic 2019 levels. Uh, the recovery is still very much driven by uh, um, leisure and VFR traffic. It is no doubt boosted by uh, massive capacity expansion from a number of ultra-local skiers, mainly Ryanair and Wizz Air. Conversely, uh, the uh, European network uh, airline groups tend to be very cautious about the capacity they put in the market. They're still putting this summer less capacity in the market than what they used to do in summer 2019. Okay. And it's very much all about still the intra-European, transatlantic and North African market. Okay. Um, and so, on that note, so what do you think airlines can do to boost their connectivity and sort of get over that um, apprehension of, you know, going back to full productivity um, ahead of the summer? Well, I think there's, there's a number of factors. I think what is important is that the industry works together yeah. to recover air connectivity, and this is typically what happens here at Roots. Yeah. Uh, I think on our side, the worries when we look at the airlines are very much about their willingness to put more capacity in the market uh, because they've become accustomed to capacity discipline and uh, they're very much, we see many airlines focused on, on yields and becoming more risk averse in terms of putting more capacity in the market. Now we do recognize that some airlines are still facing uh, issues in terms of getting the adequate resources in terms of labor, but also in terms of aircraft and spare parts. And there are constraints there in terms of their ability to put more capacity in the market. Okay, right. Um, so within the aviation industry, sustainability is a massive topic. Working towards jet zero and net zero and all this is, is very key right now. So what do you think airlines and airports can do to better manage the carbon pollution? And are there any management or strategies that they should be putting in place right now to achieve that? Well, I think we are pretty set in terms of how we want to get to net zero by yeah. 2050. We have jointly together with the airlines, but with also the aircraft manufacturers and the air navigation service providers, we've come up with a decarbonization roadmap for the uh, aviation industry overall. Uh, so we have a credible plan, um, but we need governments to support us much more in those efforts because this is not something we can do alone. Yeah. Uh, so it's gonna be in the short term a lot about uh, boosting the production of sustainable aviation fuels. I think we're seeing airlines and airports committed to deploy and uplift those sustainable aviation fuels. But uh, we need to get the quantities, the production. We need also to get the right price because for now, uh, uh, sustainable aviation fuel are still two to four or five times more expensive yeah. than yeah. conventional fuels. So uh, there are major risks in terms of the impact that this could have on demand and ultimately on air connectivity. Yeah. Um, and do you th so innovation and new technologies sort of go hand in hand with sustainable development. Are there any innovative or new technologies you would recommend airlines and airports do right now to you know, help them achieve jet zero, um, just to help them be more sustainable? Well, I think, uh, again, you know, this, this is something that uh, depends a lot on uh, external parties yeah. and in particular aircraft manufacturers, engine manufacturers, in terms of getting uh, the, the new aircraft technology that will allow to decarbonize. Yeah. Uh, so I think there's, there's complete willingness from the side of the airlines and the airports to deploy those technologies as soon as they are available. Mm -hmm. 
uh, noting that once again, you know, we, we need to make this work also from an economic and financial perspective. Yeah. Uh, if you look at airports, for example, um, we won't face so much investment in terms of deploying sustainable aviation fuel because we can manage uh, the supply through our existing facilities and infrastructure. Yeah. But when you look at green hydrogen, uh, we need completely new uh, infrastructure to deploy this kind of energy at our airports. Yeah. And if we look at urban airports, and if you take only the 300 top urban airports, you're talking of a price tag of about 16 billion, at the very least, yeah. in terms of investment. Yeah to be able to accommodate uh, uh, green hydrogen at airports. So that's that's a major challenge oh, yeah, going forward. I um, and as a final fun, light-hearted question, what is something that keeps you up at night? Um, our license, not just to keep growing yeah. as an industry, but earning our license to keep operating okay. because of societal pressure mm. over decarbonization and sustainability and the absolute need for us to prove and confirm our societal relevance. Okay. Wise words. All right.